Before we proceed with the uh, next two properties, which are the differentiation property and the integration property, I prefer here to uh, take a break, solve a couple of examples of uh, a couple of interesting functions. The functions that we are going to solve now, they are interesting because, again, they are special cases uh, where we cannot use the uh, general expression of Fourier transform to calculate their Fourier transform. We cannot use the integration in order to calculate their Fourier transform. The first function is called the signal function, and the signal function is defined as 1 from 0 to infinity x1 uh, and it's negative 1 from minus infinity up to 0. This is called the signal function. Uh, if you want to calculate the free transform of this signal function using the integration from minus infinity to infinity, uh, uh, and for example, it will be from minus infinity to 0, negative 1 exponential, exponential minus g omega t dt plus another integration from 0 to infinity 1 multiplied by exponential negative g omega t dt you will find that calculating this integration again it's very difficult why because we have a phase here we have an angle and when you substitute the limits of integration infinity inside an angle angle infinity uh, will not give you any uh, known answer huh? angle infinity what is the value of exponential g infinity you will not be able to answer this so it will be very difficult to reach a closed form expression using the, uh, the uh, Fourier transform integration expression. We cannot use this integration expression to calculate the Fourier transform of the signal. So that's why we say that this function is a special case. How do they do deal with this function? How do they deal with this special function? What they do is they say this signal function we can start with, instead of starting with this signal function, we can start with a function that looks like this. An exponential function here, exponential minus at, and here, another exponential function that starts at negative 1, and we can write the expression for this exponential function at negative exponential at, and then uh, we calculate the Fourier transform, we calculate the Fourier transform for this function and then we take the limit, calculate Fourier transform for this function and then take the limit, limit as a goes to zero. As a goes to zero, and try to, uh, uh, try to take the limit as a goes to zero, as a goes to zero, what happens to this exponential curve? When a goes to zero, this exponential curve will tend to be a constant line at one and this exponential curve when a goes to zero, it will tend to be a constant line at negative one, which will turn to be the signal function. So the signal function is the limit. The signal function is the limit of this function when a goes to zero. Okay? Of course, here a is a positive real constant. A is positive real constant. In order for the exponential curve to be decreasing, a must be positive. So what we do now is we are going to calculate Fourier transform for this function first and then we take the limit of the result as a goes to zero. So let's do the Fourier transform here. The Fourier transform for this function it's the Fourier transform for this function. Let's call it x of t. The Fourier transform of x of t is integration from minus infinity to zero. This curve multiplied by exponential minus g omega t dt plus integration from 0 to infinity this curve exponential minus g omega t dt so if we do this integration we get negative here negative we can merge these two exponentials together it would be a minus j omega t divided over a minus j omega okay and then we substitute the limits from minus infinity to zero and then plus again we can merge the two curves here the two exponentials here it will be negative a plus j omega t divided over a plus j omega there is a negative sign so it will be negative here and again we substitute from 0 to infinity so let's substitute now exponential 0 it's 1 and exponential 
some constant multiplied by minus infinity, it's exponential negative infinity, it will be zero, right? So exponential zero, it's one, minus exponential minus infinity, it's zero. Divided over a minus g omega, minus, here, exponential minus infinity, it will be, exponential minus infinity, it will be zero, minus exponential zero, it's one, over a plus g omega. So the result now will be, the result now will be minus 1 over a minus g omega, minus minus will be plus 1 over a plus g omega. Now let's combine these two terms, we'll unify the denominator, so we'll have the same denominator, so we'll multiply uh, the, uh, the denominators together. Okay, so this will be a minus g omega multiplied by a plus g omega, this gives you a squared plus omega squared, right? Or, or we don't have to do that, we don't have to do that, let's, let's just keep the result like this, let's keep the result like this, okay? This is the Fourier transform of this exponential function. What about, huh, if we take the limit, this is the Fourier transform of x of t, this exponential function. What if we take the limit of this Fourier transform as a goes to zero? This will give us the Fourier transform of the sigma function. So the Fourier transform of sigma function will be the limit of this Fourier transform as a goes to zero. Because we said as a goes to zero, this function will turn out to be the same as the sigma function. If we take the limit as a goes to zero, this term will be zero, this term will be zero, it will give you one over g omega and one over g omega, so it will be two over g omega. So the Fourier transform of the sigma function, the Fourier transform of the sigma function will be two over g omega. Very good. So this is a very important function, special case. We continue on this example, another example. It says find the Fourier transform of unit step, the unit step function. Finding the Fourier transform of the unit step function, which looks like this, we can obtain it directly from the signal function. How is that? We can obtain it directly from the signal function. How is that? Let's find the relation between the unit step and the signal. What's the relation? Can you see the relation between the unit step and the signal function? What if we add 1 to this signal function? If we add 1 to the signal function, 1 plus signal function, it looks like this. It will be 0 here, because we added 1 to minus 1, so it will be 0. And when we add 1 to 1 here, it will be 2. So if we add 1 to a signal function, it will give us a function like this. What if we multiply the whole thing by half? If we multiply the whole thing by half, this will be 1, right? And 0 will stay as 0. So 1 plus sigma function multiplied by half, this is a unit step. So the Fourier transform of the unit step equals the Fourier transform of this amount. The Fourier transform of half multiplied by 1 plus sigma function of t. Right? Like the Fourier transform of half, the Fourier transform of half, let's first, the Fourier transform of half multiplied by sigma, the Fourier transform of half multiplied by sigma, it will be 1 over g omega. The Fourier transform of half equals what? The Fourier transform of 1, the Fourier transform of 1 was 2 pi delta omega. So what is the Fourier transform of half? It's pi delta omega. So this will give us pi delta omega. So the Fourier transform of the unit step can be written as 1 over g omega plus pi delta omega. Okay? So now in this video we calculated the Fourier transform of two special cases, the signal function first, and then from the signal function we obtain the Fourier transform of the uh, unit step, okay? And we'll use these two examples in the, uh, uh, will be useful to us in the next two properties, the differentiation and the integration.
See you in the next video.